Welcome to this online tutorial on basic model building in Flexcom. My name is Angus Connolly and I'm the product manager for our Flexcom software. Today's tutorial is about model building in Flexcom, so I'm going to give you an overview of how to construct a model in Flexcom and show you how easy that is. So let's start off by creating a new project. So file, new project. Give the project a name and a location on your hard drive. Next let's add an input file. So file, new, a keyword file. So input files are called keyword files in Flexcom. I'm going to use metric units because I'm quite familiar with those. So create an input file. The input file appears on screen. Um, in order to start defining a model, we've got to put in what's called a model section. All the inputs for your, your physical or structural model go under a dollar model section within your keyword file. Um, let's start by defining a line. So we'll use the lines command to construct a line. Um, give the line a name. Um, let's call it um, SCR. We'll do, we'll do a steel continue riser because those are quite um, easy to construct. So let's say that the line starts on the seabed. Um, next time we we'll just put the origin right down on, on, on the seabed here for the for the SCR. Uh, and the top, we we'll say, would be a hang-off location right up at the vessel. So let's say we're in about um, 1,000 meters of water. So I'll um, put my XYZ coordinates in for the start and end locations of the model. And then after that, it's just a matter of um, putting in the mesh density. So if I use a mesh density of one, that means I'll get uh, I get a thousand uh, well more than a thousand elements along the length of the line. So let's use something more coarse. So we we'll start off using one meter elements right at the end, um, but we'll go straight up to in the middle to about uh, twenty five meter elements. So we won't have too too dense of a mesh. You notice that's um, in a straight line because I haven't actually given the line length. So let's do that now. Um, Let's say we'll go for maybe uh, 1600 meters of line. So that's now we can see our uh, catenary profile. I'll just switch off the node numbers again. Um, once the line is defined, uh, I guess we need to put in an ocean as well. So let's uh, put in some environmental data. Uh, the water depth, we'll say, was about 1000 meters. Water density, 1025. Uh, maybe a bit more explicit there kilograms per meter cubed. Um, and let's say 9.8 meters per second for gravity. So the, the insertion of units like that is optional, but I like to do it because it makes the input file very clear. I could do the same if you, for, for uh, gravity as well if I need to. Also, because the water depth is, let's say, 1,000 and the top of the riser is at 1,000 meters, maybe let's define a parameter of a pre-processing section. So you just have a pre-processor section before your model section. Uh, we'll define a number of parameters there. Let's say we define water depth as being uh, 1,000 meters. And I can reference that parameter later on. So I'm defining the water depth down here. I'll just use an equation reference. So this equals water depth. Uh, and the top of the line as well would be at the same height. So you can see how you can build in predefined parameters as well into, into the main model. Um, now that I've got the the SCR in place and I've got the, the, the ocean there I need to define a seabed as well so let's pop in a seabed by using the seabed properties keyword um, just use an elastic seabed and the contact set for the seabed well it's basically all the elements in the model are, are the SCR we, we just the model just comprised of the SCR so let's select the SCR that means those elements can contact the seabed um, now let's put some structural properties on the line. We've just got a line in space and it doesn't have any, any mass or stiffness or anything. So we'll use the geometric sets keyword to apply those properties. Here you've got a number of options. Um, depending on what format your inputs are, let's say we've got um, a steel line. It's a steel container riser, so the rigid option is most appropriate here. So let's use that. Um, now it's expecting a set of elements, so again, we're applying properties to, to the SCR itself. And you can see that the SCR popped up as an option there because I already defined it as the name of the line previously. So, in terms of the properties for a steel riser, you, you just need some basic inputs like Young's modulus, shear modulus, um, inner and outer diameter, and mass density. So let's, let's type in some numbers there. So again, I'm gonna put units in explicitly, uh, 200, 
gigapascals for Young's modulus. Um, say about 80 gigapascals for the shear modulus. Um, the external diameter could be, um, let's say we go for a sort of an 18 inch riser. Um, and that's perfectly okay to do because Flexcom was clever enough to understand the conversion from uh, meters to uh, inches to meters. You can see that the riser looks a bit crazy on the right hand side of the screen there. That's because I don't actually have any mass on it yet, so I'll pop the mass in now. That'd be um, sorry, seven seven thousand eight hundred fifty kilograms per meter cubed. Um, so that's the structural properties to find. Um, you can see a warning down here. This this um, keyword syntax issue window tells you if you've got painting defined incorrectly. So if I put in sort of a negative number for say Young's modulus, it tells me this has got to be a positive number, and that's uh, summarized down in the keyword syntax, syntax issues window. So so it also tells me that I need a hydrodynamic sets keyword. Um, so why would I need hydrodynamic sets? This is just to apply. Um, drag and, and hydrodynamic loading via Morrison's equation. So again, I put in the set of elements that I'm applying these to. In this case, I've just got one element set, but in more complex models, I could have many, many element sets. So here you can see it's expecting um, normal uh, and tangential drag and inertia and added mass coefficients for, for the riser. So I'm just setting up a very basic model. I'm not going to be too worried. I'll just put in some default uh, drag in the normal direction. Um, so what's missing from my model? Well, I guess I would like to have a vessel in there. So I use the vessel integrated keyword to add a new vessel. Um, you can see there that when you get used to the keyword editor, you can actually press the tab key to populate out. So if I just clear that again, um, you can use the return or enter key to fit to complete commands. You can also use the tab key just to, to auto populate. Uh, once you get familiar with the keyword editor, this will be all become uh, easy for you as well. So let's create a new vessel called FPSO. Uh, we need to give it an initial position. Perhaps I'll maybe just switch up to the table editor, which I haven't really used at all before. I prefer to use the keyword editor on the bottom part of the screen, but you can also use this table editor if you want to. Um, it's just an alternative way of inputting data. So I'll say the initial position. Um, and then you've got some dimensions for whatever for the vessel. So let's say the vessel is about, um, I don't know, like a long FPSO, maybe 300 meters, maybe about 80 meters wide. I'm just making up some dimensions now, which mightn't be perfectly uh, sensical, but they'll do for the purposes of illustration. Uh, in terms of the initial coordinates, um, again, I'll just try to refer this back to the water depth, so it will place the vessel roughly around the water surface um, and I guess maybe about a thousand meters in the way so I'll just close that table editor again there because I don't really tend to use it but you're you're free to use it it's basically the same information as I've typed below in the keyword editor just in a different input screen so I'll, I'll just close those and I'll move back to my favorite keyword editor down here so now the vessel is in place and you can see the vessel on screen um, and so the model is is, is, is is complete now it's fully defined um, we're almost ready to do our simulation, but we need to put in um, some solution parameters. And we do these in this, what's called the load case section beneath the uh, the model view or the model section. So the first thing to do is tell the program what analysis type we're performing. Um, we're going to start off with a static analysis, obviously, to get the static equilibrium configuration. I'll insert some time variables uh, using the start time command. Uh, time is, is notional. Uh, in a static analysis, but Flexcom just requires you to put in some default parameters. So let's start at zero seconds and let's finish at one second. Um, we also need to put in some constraints now because the model would be statically indeterminate because I haven't put any constraints uh, on the solution. So I do that using the boundary keyword. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fix the boundary at the seabed. I use that using a constant uh, command. Uh, here now it's expecting a node number and a degree of freedom. So if I just go back up to my line command, I can, I can switch on the node labels here in, in the model view as well. Um, and you see there's a node label there called seabed. So when you define a line in Flexcom, the start and end points called seabed and hangoff, they're automatically defined as node labels. 
so you don't need to worry about what the actual node numbers are you can just use these node labels so I'm going to constrain the seabed uh, point in degrees freedom 1, 2 and 3 that means just I'll have a pin connection on the seabed so it's XYZ and it's free to rotate um, and at the top I'm going to put in some vessel boundary conditions which means that the upper end of the riser will be tied to uh, the vessel as it moves and displaces in time and space so the top part is called a uh, hangoff which is just obscured there by the vessel I can just hide the vessel momentarily so you can see that so the top node is called hangoff um, so I'll just go down and, and refer to this node label which is called hangoff and again I, I'll just fix this in, in uh, the translation of degrees of freedom x y and z just need to correct those to, to the different degrees of freedom um, and at this, this point we're, 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 we're ready to do a, do a simulation so I'll just save my input file and then I'll um, press the run button so when I press the run button um, the analysis status window shows that the simulation has just started and um, we'll just give it a moment to run um, so here we can see it's running along nicely and there we go it's finished so in the model view I'll just make the model view a little bit bigger now so we can see this in more detail um, so just switch the vessel back on so we can see it um, so here's this steel continue riser um, it seemed to have penetrated the seabed there which I wouldn't have expected so I'll just go back and double check my seabed definition Oh yes, I've just um, forgotten to put in a contact difference for the seabed, so let me just do that now, uh, quickly. Say 100 uh, kilonewtons per meter, per meter, and I can rerun that. I, I can also actually put in a post-processing request, which I'll, I'll just do now as well, just to show you how you can get some variables back. So let's do this through the table editor just for a change. So I'll add in a new section called database post-processing, which will allow me to extract some results. Um, I'll just look at a a snapshot of um, let's say you know effective tension uh, or time be one second uh, looking at the element set called SCR and uh, the units of tension I'd like maybe are kilonewtons I could also request effective tension in kips there if I want it which is, is quite easy to do as well um, so let me just let me just run that simulation again with the seabed stiffness on and I'm also requesting a plot now of effective tension as an output variable so that just takes uh, a moment to run. Rerunning the simulation, but you don't need to re. I, I needed to rerun the simulation there because I had a new context difference. But if you're just creating plots, uh, you don't need to rerun the entire simulation. So let's make the plot a little bit bigger there for you on screen. Um, effective tension snapshot. Obviously, it varies along the length of the line from the seabed right up to the top. Um, there are tool tips you can turn on here, so you can actually pick out which element in the model the, any given point relates to. So you can see the tooltips up on the top left hand corner of my screen there. So I'll just close the uh, plot again. Um, just quickly show you the model view before we before we finish up. Um, the various different views you can have. Um, I'll, do, I'll do a separate tutorial on the model view itself, but you can just use the mouse to kind of pan or zoom, maybe zoom in on the vessel there, so on. It's very few. Uh, what's kind of very useful actually is if you want to just color the spot. So let's say we were looking at a plot of effective tension. So I can turn on effective tension in terms of color contouring. Uh, I can also increase the thickness of the riser just sort of temporarily, just so you get a better view of what's going on there. So I've made the steel container very thick just for illustrative purposes. So you can see the low values of tension indicated by blue going right up to, to red near the vessel. Um, so you can see how easy it is, uh, even for a beginner user, to actually build a model from scratch. Uh, so we built, we built a, a steel container riser with not, not too many commands, very easy to do. Uh, we showed you how to use the keyword editor and also the table editor, which is just an alternative input mechanism. And we briefly introduced you to the model view as well. So I think that concludes the uh, tutorial on the model building uh, introduction to Flexcom. And, uh, Hopefully you've gained some insight from it and we will go into more detail in, in subsequent tutorials.